All right. What I've got here is a uh, regulated switching power supply. This is a dedicated 13.8 volt uh, supply. Um, you know, constant current, 10 amps. Um, the uh, problem with this, though, let me uh, flip it on. So let's see what it says. And we essentially have no voltage. Definitely not 13.8 volts like we should. So let's uh, break this open and find out what's wrong with it. Disconnect the power. Now there's just uh, four bolts, four screws uh, at the corners. We'll just uh, pull those out. I'm going to pause for a moment and do that, and we'll come back and look inside. But before I do that, I just want to note this. This is a uh, little thing that uh, the sticker says high potential or high pot or high potted. Uh, this is basically just saying, hey, be aware there is dangerous high voltage inside this. So, be careful when you're working on electronics, especially when there's high voltages in involved. Alright, here we go. So at first glance, nothing tremendously obvious. Uh, one thing we might want to check right down here is the fuse. We'll set the multimeter to uh, give us a tone if there's a connection. So you can hear the tone. And then that means there's a connection there. So we'll just check here. And we have a good fuse. So the fuse is not the reason why we have no voltage. Although, should have suspected that the switch lit up. So uh, unlikely to be the fuse. Looking in closer, oh, what do we have here? Look at the top of that capacitor. That is quite rounded. And if we look inside here, there is a lot of gunk right around these two capacitors. So, before I even look at anything else in the circuit, uh, these are flat, not a big thing, but all that gunk over there suggests to me these two capacitors have gone out and they've leaked, and they've leaked all around the surrounding area, even over down into here, and it looks like it's even somewhat down into here. So, first order of business is going to be just getting this out, uh, not too difficult. Um, there are another four screws and uh, things will focus. So, four screws. Uh, that'll let us get into the board. We'll take off the various connections. Uh, probably going to have to uh, push these out. Uh, they're just held on by some plastic clips. And we'll have access to the board. It's not too difficult, um, but uh, I'm just going to 
pause while I uh, pull those out. All right, this is still drying from the uh, cleanup with the isopropyl alcohol, but hopefully you can see that we don't have all that goo. If it'll focus. Focus, focus. There we go. So we don't have all that goo running everywhere. Now there are some spots down in there that I couldn't get into and underneath these two capacitors. But now we need to figure out where on the back we need to do the desoldering. So we got three components here, capacitor, resistor, and another capacitor. We're taking out the two capacitors. And there's an interesting feature here. We got some jumper wires on this section of the board. So if I flip the board over, this would be where those two jumper wires and the middle blank jumper wire, they didn't put three in, they only put two in. That's the jumper wires. So from the jumper wires, that would be these two points here. Those are going to be the first capacitor. That's gonna be the resistor and that's gonna be the other capacitor. So I need to get set up so I can desolder those and we'll be back. Before we desolder, we need to make sure that we remember which side of the capacitor the negative lead is. These are uh, both marked in the same direction towards, the, both marked in the same direction towards this end of the board. So when we look at that, this puts that side to the negative. We'll get that, uh, those two caps desoldered, and I'll show you the new ones that I have. All right, so I'm gonna apply some flux to the uh, spots on the board where we want to desolder. All right, we should be just about ready. Put the ventilation on. And the uh, desoldering wick here. I wish I had those uh, fancy desoldering tools. Vacuum assistance. This is a slow and tedious process, desoldering components. And if it wasn't for the fact that the fix for this is about three dollars, I wouldn't even uh, bother. But three dollars versus replacing this at over a hundred dollars is, uh, I think, well worth the uh, price. Something seems to have a lot of thermal mass. It's not wanting to wet the uh, solder real easily. The disadvantage to uh, using solder wick like this is you can overheat things really easily. And if you get things too hot, you'll end up getting the pads to lift off. And if the pads come off your board, that's a big problem. Just little by little, I'm working it away. I'm switching back and forth between pads to uh, keep from uh, overheating them. The uh, flux in my solder works might be uh, a bit on the old side. That's why I pre flux them, but I think I may need a flux it again. Alright, more flux added. Yeah, there we go. Now things are starting to flow a little better. 
Might need to uh, invest in some new solder wick braid. Looks like, yep, that one's free. I should also invest in a uh, new soldering station. My old soldering station had a uh, resistor burnout in the middle of it, and it was kind of a low quality uh, station to begin with. Uh, tried to desolder some stuff, and the pads lifted right off. Uh, a little more complicated to repair some. Uh, traces yeah, I don't like about desoldering is it takes a lot more time than it does to solder that capacitor should be right able to be taken out I'll flip that over so that stays in focus and there's one ooh that is nasty under there Ugh, definitely see why this wasn't working. All right, let's get that other one desoldered. So the next component here, that would be the uh, resistor. So this is our second capacitor that we want to take out of circuit and replace. should be it yep all right soldering iron where it's safe and there's the other one and yep that one's pretty ugly too all right well I need to get this uh, under here all cleaned up and we can see those big black bars on the uh, uh, circuit diagram on the PCB board uh, telling us which side is our negative and we got a V plus for our positive side oh that's uh, for this um, well yeah alrighty I'll be back in a second after I get this cleaned up. All right, so this is the capacitor that we just took out. Go focus. Uh, 2200 microfarad, uh, 35 working volts. What I was able to get at my local supply house is this. 2200 microfarads. 50 volts. Uh, similar rating, uh, 105 degrees C. Flip this over to the other side. 105 degrees C. So, we'll go through the process, making sure that that lead is going to be at this end of the board. All right, there we go. Both of the uh, capacitors in place. And those are the black to that end. Um, you can see there's the uh, black bar. So we put that short lead with the uh, black here on that uh, side, the marked negative. Okay, just give a little bit of tension on these uh, leads, pull them up and push them to the side. Let me double check, make sure everything's flat on that side. All right, now I just need to uh, heat up the iron again and uh, get those soldered in. All right, all heated up. Those are 
not pretty uh, joints, they should make electrical contact. All right, last little bit. We'll uh, snip off these leads. And all that's left is to put everything back together and see if it works. All right, everything's back together. We're ready to uh, turn it on. Switch lights up if you can see that. So, do we have our expected voltage? Now this particular uh, multimeter is only going to give us a uh, whole number uh, voltage reading, but looky there, 12, 13, basically what we have is our uh, 13.8. I got to get a different multimeter to see exactly where it landed. Might need to adjust something internally to get it to the right voltage. But we fixed it. That's what we wanted to see. It works. We have voltage. We're good to go. So remember to ask questions and try things. Have a good one, everybody.